Welcome, welcome to Soccer Zone uh, podcast. Um, in the in the world of Cocoa, there are some uh, some credo. Uh, we have seen the last episode uh, Mexico, and now we stay always in the central of America, and uh, we are in uh, in Guatemala, in uh, Antigua, a beautiful city, and uh, that I suggest to everybody to to go and, and visit because it is uh, amazing. Here uh, there is a, a, a great chocolate maker. He make uh, coffee and uh, chocolate from cocoa, and uh, his name uh, is uh, Fernando Arias. Um, here we are. Hello, Fernando. How are you? Hello, Umberto. Hello, hello, Giuseppe. How are you doing? Yeah, well, the the brand is uh, Fernando uh, Cafe. Cafe. Yeah, cafe like Italian, Italian uh, name. The spelling is German. So about it, uh, before to talk about uh, chocolate, it is uh, good for us uh, to know more about uh, about you. So if you want to to present yourself, to explain to us what is your uh, background, your history, where are you coming from, your professional knowledge, and so here we are. Well, my name, as you said, is Fernando. Uh, my background is uh, international business. Uh, for many years, I've been exporting from perishables to other things, uh, including asparagus, which is quite demanding. Um, <clears throat> since 2000, uh, I moved to Antigua and to start a coffee shop until 2007 when we switched completely to bean to bar. So instead of uh, buying the chocolate, we were buying more cacao from Guatemala. And uh, we started doing the, what you already know, the chocolate covered cocoa bean that is quite, uh, quite nice. Yeah. What, uh, what kind of uh, similar uh, things you, you, you have used with the cocoa that, of, of your knowledge that you just had with the, with the coffee? The, the, the fact that to roast the coffee yeah. helped you or not? Yeah, 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 yeah. We roast the coffee and we roast the cocoa beans. Uh, that's, uh, I, I wouldn't say it's the same. But the, the idea behind it is, is, is the same, is to enhance as much as possible the quality that is already present in either the coffee or cacao before roasted. We don't invent flavors during roasting. We just uh, show them. They have to be present in, in, in cacao or in coffee. Um, Fernando, I rem you talk about uh, uh, roasting. That is something, yeah. obviously, uh, some of your first uh, you know, knowledge that you put in cocoa because of your coffee knowledge and experience. Uh, yeah. another, kind, another process that is uh, uh, normally quite uh, uh, um, unknown or uh, that nobody can define very much is conching. Okay, mm. so... We basically, if we go back in the farm, probably fermentation, roasting, and conching are three of the processes that are most complex, okay? When we met the first time, I remember you visited us in Milan, and I remember you, you brought with you something like 30 kilos of uh, a liquor that you thought chocolate. it was chocolate. not being properly, it was a chocolate. It was already chocolate. Chocolate, It okay. was a 70% chocolate. That was quite acidic. Exactly. You didn't like the fermentation in the very moment. Uh, no, no, and, and, and that's correct. And that I was remember in 2014. that. 2014. Exactly. You came to make a test with our conch machine with Kligo. Okay. Yeah. And we stayed together something like three hours and a half, something like that. Uh, you you made a spoon fall into the machine. Yes. <laughs> so we stopped. When, when the process had to be stopped, 
And I was expelled from your premises. No, no, I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay, but the, the point is, uh, because uh, in some parts of the world, conching is confused with refining, okay? Because in many parts, I think in all the part of the world, is not uh, well-defined conching as a process, okay? What do you think, okay? the conching process makes on the main flavors or how you use conching to get the flavors out of the chocolate, uh, which is conching for you? Conching basically is taking out unwanted flavors from the chocolate. That, that would be the bottom line. Uh, it sounds very easy, but uh, th that's among the most complicated things that the thing that you can do especially the way we, we still do the chocolate, which is with machines like uh, from you, but those are refiner conchers. So uh, at the same time that they, they are refining, they are also conching, at least with your machines, we have temperature control, which helps a lot to, to, to either uh, make the conching faster or slower. And we also have control on the speed of the wheels so we can do the refining faster and slower. So, so in that regard, we have more control than with the spectras that we were using before, the 20 kilo spectras that we were using where you have one speed and no temperature. The temperature, the, the heat is, is, is produced by friction. Uh, when you have machines like that, your only hope is to cross your fingers that you reach at the same time the proper ref, uh, refining uh, degree and the proper conching. And that's really, that's really difficult. Uh, with your machines, the Roomba, uh, those are, uh, then it's a lot easier, but I really would love to have uh, a Cligo. And listen, up to you. It's more important because when we made the classes here, also I have the doubt if it's working more, the, the process of, uh, you know, uh, moving the chocolate to create some air into the chocolate or the time that you leave, you know, the chocolate into the conch and then leave it on and on or the temperature. Or is just as well, someone told me, well, is that, the, the mixture of the three, I mean, you have it's to combine. Everything. It's everything. It's everything because if you, if you don't raise the temperature by, uh, at all and the Cligo, the Cligo won't produce friction by itself, right? No. It's because it don't, they don't have any wheels. Uh, they have something that, that is moving the, the, the melting chocolate. Uh, but what the Cligo has is, is, is uh, temperature control. So you can easily and you can you have the ratio of expelling as well right exactly yeah so that's really important uh it's, 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 it's not so everything is is important the the temperature uh the speed of movement because that's that's making uh flavors move and be out and then they can be expelled uh remember when we started smelling what was coming from from that uh, lemon chocolate that we had, it was not pleasant. But w when the process was stopped, just before the, 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 the spoon incident, the, the, the flavor was quite nice already. So the chocolate had something, the cacao was good. It was not properly fermented, but that, uh, that doesn't mean that we couldn't fix the flavor. That, that's a chocolate that I would be, I would have been happy to sell. Yeah. Uh, um, another question that we normally make with the, the chocolate makers that they have a direct relationship with the farmers. Okay, we know that there are many places in the world where you know the the the, 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 the farmers the, the use of the of the of the children to make you know to work in the farms and things like that, and uh, normally more the crafters, the artisan, then the big companies, they take care of uh, how is the job in the farms, you know, how is your point of view? I mean, 
your uh, relationship with the farmer does uh, improve their condition, does improve their uh, life of like, quality of life, and uh, how do you think a, a good chocolate maker would have the right approach with this kind of, uh, of issue? Well, the, uh, number one, because we make the chocolate in a country that is producing the cacao, I have direct contact with the farmers without much problem. I don't have to take a plane, I, don't have, I just go. Uh, and it's fairly, fairly easy. Um, when it comes to, to how we deal with the farmers, actually, well, the farmers are quite smart. At least the ones that we work with are quite smart. Smart in a positive way or in a negative yes. way? Yes. No, no, no. Positive. In a positive way. They, I mean, the, the, the ones that we work with, they are fairly new in this, in this business. And by fairly new, I, need that, I mean that, the, for example, there's one family, they have been doing research for the last 20 years. Uh, and they have their own varieties, including some are already registered in their own name. So they, they are able to sell them. Uh, they are the kind of people that are getting already per hectare uh, anywhere from two to two and a half tons of uh, dry product, as opposed to the national average in Guatemala is about 300 kilos per hectare. Uh, if you get 300 kilos, there is not much I can do for you or anybody else. Uh, but if you are, because how much do I need to pay you if you are getting only 300 kilos per hectare? And basically spending the same amount of money than uh, if you are harvesting uh, 2,500 kilos. Uh, but the price that we, that we set for, for the ton of, of uh, cocoa, especially because we are selling in Guatemala, basically, and basically here in our shop in Antigua, uh, well, it's, it is a price that is telling the farmers, it's sending the message, we want more. We want you to grow. We want to grow together. And when we move into more, uh, I, would, I wouldn't say sophisticated, but into, into better paying uh, for the chocolate, uh, markets, uh, that, for that I mean Europe, uh, the US, Canada, and eventually also in some parts in Asia. Uh, we expect the farmers to benefit from the, that as well. But e even now, when we are selling here, the farmers are getting a lot more than what uh, they would be getting from the regular market. Yeah. What is the difference, according to you, between the normal standard chocolate that we could find every, everywhere in, in the supermarket made for the big companies and the, the bean to bar uh, chocolate made from the artisans, also from you? Well, the, the difference is sta staggering um, because uh, the cacao that is uh, being harvested, the, the, the bulk cacao, let's call it that way, versus the handcraft or the artisan cacao. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and, and by far, the bulk is a lot more. Probably what? Would you agree that 95% of the cacao in the world is bulk, roughly? So that leaves only 5% for, for quality that we are happy to, to use. But the only cacao, the only chocolate market that is growing and is growing at two digits and it's been growing for, for the last 12 years in, by two digits is precisely the, 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 the craft chocolate. The, the, the commercial chocolate, the one that you can find in Europe for, for as cheap as one euro for a hundred grand. And if the same cacao is being used by a renowned chef or chocolatier, chocolatier is, it, it, it's two euros per 100 grams, that means that the, the quality is just the same, but it has a, a familiar face. 
that doesn't mean that the chocolate is good. Um, I, I would say that the, the difference is, is huge in, in how, from the very beginning, from selecting the seeds, from uh, how you treat not just the plants, but the land. Somebody really wise told me that once you take out something out of context, is it loses its meaning. That happened, ex that happened exactly, that's exactly what happened when they took the cacao from America and took it to Africa. And they knew that they took it to, to Africa because it was going to be a lot cheaper. And I'm not talking about the plantations that were already in Africa taken by the Spaniards centuries ago. That, that was a good and still, still is a good cacao. But I'm talking about the bulk cacao that they plant the big three companies plan to, 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 and they they took out from America and and delivered to to Africa. What what's happened in the meantime? Let's see. Uh, in Ivory Coast, since 1990 until 2015, Ivory Coast has lost 90 percent of their national forest because of cacao. Is cacao the culprit? Not really, because if you see, if you go to any cacao plantation in Guatemala, that is making the land better year and year. But if you take that out of context uh, and you take it to a place where the main goal is to pay as little as possible, then you're forcing the farmers to invade the national forest, destroy the trees, they burn it actually. It's like a big cemetery. I don't know if you've seen pictures of that. But there are, there are documentaries. One of them is pretty good, made by Deutsche Welle. And the other one is Netflix. Uh, and it's called The Bitter Chocolate, I think. You can see, it's good to see, to see the two of them. Because although they present the same reality, they come from slightly different angles. And they, together, they cover everything. Uh, slavery is better covered in Deutsche Welle. And the destruction of the forest is better covered in the Netflix uh, the documentary. But uh, that doesn't happen here. If you grow cacao here, you are actually recuperating the land that might, be, might have been destroyed by palm oil, which should be, be banned in Guatemala, or by cane sugar, which should be not banned, but reduced by 75%. Uh, and, and then when you walk, into into when you walk in, in into a farm of into cacao farm, you you're walking into a land that is being restored, or if the land was already okay, into a much better land. But year after year, doesn't matter how much you take from that land, the land is going to be better. Well, you have explained. Well, also the, the point of view of the chocolate maker. Uh, we, we have also to talk about the, the market of the final uh, consum the consumers. And um, how is it, according to you, the, the knowledge about the chocolate in, uh, in the world? And um, it is, uh, uh, till now, uh, it is honest to say that the, 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 the marketing uh, is uh, always more important, but um, there are also the, the young generation. I say with my with my boys that they they they, they read behind the uh, the paper of what they are eating more and more, and so my my question uh, is uh, according to you it. Uh, how is now the situation? The, the, the marketing is uh, stronger, so strong, or uh, something is changing, and also the chocolate crafters uh, with the, the simplicity sometimes of their uh, uh, marketing uh, is uh, starting to grow. As I said, the, 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 the good quality cacao, it's... Uh, it's the only one that has been growing for the last 12 years. The mass produced chocolate is stagnated. And uh, my guess is that who is consuming that chocolate? Well, in general, all people. What, happened to, what happens to them? Well, they die eventually. 
and they are being replaced by really small children that do take chocolate as a candy. And um, craft chocolate is not a candy. So that's when the awareness in, in, in very young adults uh, and that age has been is, is, is being reduced year and after year. Uh, the awareness of uh, oh, this is what is this? Welcome to the flavor. This is chocolate. Well, I have never tried something like this. That's very because here we have direct contact with people from all over the world. Not the last year, yeah. but this year they are starting. <laughs> they are starting to come. <laughs> we are always <laughs> at home. We We're know starting, everybody. Yeah. They are starting to come back, and, and we see that. They, they, what is this? Chocolate. And something that we have started to do more is we've been, we, start, we have started to do uh, tastings. Uh, we prefer in person. So far, we have participated in virtual tastings, but we have not promoted them. We prefer them to be here because there is no way that, although we can see each other, there is no way that uh, that we can compare that to to actually being together. And in Guatemala, you can do it. So, this is what we do always. We always put a mass-produced chocolate into the taste, into the tasting. Listen, Fernando, do you do you like wine? Do you drink wine usually? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. So because you are, you have knowledge about coffee, you have knowledge about wine, okay, and these are basically artisanal. I mean, they, their origin is artisanal, the artisanal food. Uh, do you think uh, coffee, uh, chocolate is more similar to coffee, is more similar to wine, and how is perceived by the consumers? For, because chocolate is more, it's younger as an artisanal product, you know, an artisanal food. I mean, it was big company food. The three are pretty much the same in this regard. Okay. Wine was the first. Not in Italy. You have been having good wine in Spain as well for centuries. Yeah, But yeah. Le let's take the U.S. Mm -hmm. le when, they when they started, a long time ago, because the coffee, gen coffee, the coffee revolution in the States started in the early 80s. Mm -hmm. Wine was about 10 years before. So they start consuming less wine, but better quality. Yeah. And still you had all people drinking the wine that you would never drink. Yeah. But the young people were able, uh, they were drinking a lot less because it was more expensive but they were drinking much better uh, uh, wine. The same happened in the early 80s with coffee, and that's, that already know pretty well. Uh, they started drinking a lot less coffee, but much better quality. And enter the, the 2000s, and the same started to happen with chocolate. Mm -hmm much less per capita, but much better, especially with the young people. And the old people, they, st they stick to, to their Nestle, yeah. Hershey, yeah. whatever. Uh, but, but young people are willing to pay a lot more and to eat a lot less, or like a friend explained to me, which is also interesting, uh, they, uh, They have always, they always have my chocolate, but that's under lock. It's not They are about my age. Yeah. And, so, uh, and in the kitchen, they have big jars of candy chocolate or chocolate yeah, yeah. candy. So they say, we're talking two different things here. This is for the daily, daily craving. When there is a special occasion, and Zacapa, you know, Zacapa, the, the rum from Guatemala, Zacapa yeah, yeah, yeah. When Zacapa is going to be out, your chocolate comes with it. Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> You you only use uh, Guatemala beans for your chocolate? Only that, but that's a mission. Ah, okay. You you never thought about using some other origins? No, no, no. no. <laughs> that's a mission, and and there's a whole intention behind it. I I truly believe that uh, with the two crops that Guatemala should be growing, because. Uh, if you hear about Guatemala and you, you hear, okay, what is Guatemala's vocation? Many people, most people are going to say, oh, Guatemala is agricultural. No, the vocation of Guatemala is not agricultural. And, and because uh, Umberto, you've been here, you can vouch for that. Voca agri is not agricultural because we have a lot of mountains. Mountains, We're yeah. mountains after Bunkers. mountains. Bunkers. So, Bunkers. Well, and mountains. The Falcons, are, we have some. Yeah. Uh, and those are to, to enjoy and to avoid the dangers. But the terrain is not telling that we are an agricultural country. We are a forestry country. That's our vocation. So if we want to grow something agricultural, it better be something that grows well under a canopy of trees. And that's in the highlands, coffee, and in the lowlands, cacao. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's how you, that's how can you, take multiple advantages because when you have a, an agri forest system, you get the benefit of pre uh, preventing the erosion of the soil. Plus the wood is an excellent business. Maybe people yes. don't see it like that, but it is a great business. It takes a long time, but it doesn't matter. For that you have coffee and that you have, uh, for that you have the cacao. But when it ta it's time to start cutting here and there, not just all together, but when you start to, 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 to start harvesting, you get a lot of money also from the trees. So our mission is to, 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 to make conscience around Guatemala about the, that fact and to stop growing crops that just destroy our mountains and then they destroy everything that goes down with just one rain. Exactly, exactly. Fernando, we we have quite finished our episode, and I'd like to everybody, I I asked to you, uh, how do you see your company yourself in 2030, and how do you see the the bean to bar movement around the world within the next 10 years? Hopefully, <laughs> I see myself alive. <laughs> First, everybody. <laughs> This is just a good mission. Yeah, in 2030, that was a good, good goal, I think. Um, now, when it comes to... to, to uh, we can just go down, go back to where the craft chocolate has uh, actually not really started. When it actually started to, to really pick, because it, it's, something, it's something like this. And it's taking off. So I would say that if now we have 5% of really qual craft quality, I would like to see by 2030 that to be at 20%. 20, wow. In nine, nine years, years, that's good. Well, let's add one year because last year didn't count. Okay. Let's say 2031. <laughs> okay. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Okay. We, we hope that you are right, that uh, with this uh, kind of future, we, we could uh, only grow with the, the bean to bar chocolate for sure. Okay, Fernando, we thank you a lot for uh, your time. And uh, I hope that. Uh, we, we could uh, invite you here and I hope to, to visit again Antigua yeah. very soon. Well, I have to come to Guatemala to taste your uh, coffee and, and chocolate. We hope to, to meet again together, to shake our hands. And, and one, one thing that we have not said about the cocoa beans of Guatemala, that I think uh, I have seen a lot of different cocoa beans, but the, the Guatemala are very big beans. Isn't it? Yeah, and still good, which is yeah, something yeah. that... Yes. Yeah.
do not, not normally see. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Anyway. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you, my friend. See you.